Hello everyone. Um, I am Tashdeed, software engineer from AppScore. Uh, in today's webinar, Extending Kubernetes Gateway API for Databases, I will be with you throughout the conceptual discussion and the demonstration. So let's jump into the webinar. And first of all, I'd like to show you the table of contents. Uh, first of all, we would like to discuss about a uh, problem that we have faced and which actually motivated us to extend the uh, Kubernetes Gateway project. And afterward, uh, we would discuss about some of the gateway architectures and the onboard proxy overview. And then we would go to the UDB gateway overview. Uh, after all of this uh, discussion, I would like to show you uh, a quick demonstration about our project. And finally, there will be a QA session for you. Uh, feel free to ask any questions in that session uh, by unmuting yourself in the Zoom. So, yeah. So, entering into the problem statement, um, first of all, uh, it has become a common place that users are running database inside Kubernetes. Um, a common pattern is to use separate clusters for user application and database. Um, but this creates a challenge on how to access the database across Kubernetes clusters uh, from application clusters. There uh, is no standard mechanism for this uh, in Kubernetes today. But uh, typically this can be solved by introducing a proxy between the database and applications that connect to them. This proxy has some following requirements. Number one is this should be TLS secure and the TLS secure connection should be uh, in the client to proxy and also the to the proxy to the database server. Uh, number two, uh, this proxy should support multiple database types and as well as multiple instances of those database types. And number three, uh, this should be there should be low maintenance overhead and the operation operational complexity should be as low as possible so uh, recently we have faced uh, some problems with our qdb provision databases inside our kubernetes cluster so i will go through this and uh, show you how we actually what actually uh, kubernetes uh, gateway Sorry, UDB Gateway is solving. So as you can see in my screen, I have a Kubernetes cluster and inside that I ran a MySQL database server that was in the cluster mode. And I wanted my clients to uh, have access to my da MySQL database from the outside cluster. So I configured an ingress uh, in front of this Kubernetes cluster. And my MySQL database was TLS and TLS secure, I provisioned it with uh, TLS certificates. So the inter-cluster communications uh, would happen in a TLS secure way, as well as the client to database server communication would also be in a TLS secure way. So everything worked fine when we used, let's encrypt, uh, when we used self-signed certificates with uh, while provisioning our MySQL. Uh, everything was good, we could access this, uh, the client connection was TLS secured, but problem arised when we tried to use a uh, Let's Encrypt certificate. Uh, it wasn't supported with QDB MySQL. There were some issues like when I am setting up a MySQL cluster with QDB, I uh, need to issue a certificate, uh, issue the certificate uh, with sense like local host or the IP addresses of local pod IPs and let's encrypt actually doesn't support this. So uh, we couldn't actually provision our MySQL with uh, using let's encrypt certificates in QDB. But uh, there would have been a solution like if we could somehow configure our ingress or our nginx server to terminate the uh, SSL certificate 
So uh, we, we could have configured our Nginx server with let's say certificate. The client would try to connect to the Nginx. The Nginx would terminate the SSL certificate, uh, the TLS, and then it would connect to the uh, inside cluster MySQL uh, in either TLS secret mode, mode or not. That could have solved my issue uh, with the let's encrypt certificate, but, uh, but we couldn't do that. Uh, the support was unavailable uh, at the time and probably now. But uh, we came with, uh, came up with a uh, came up with a temporary solution. Like if we just uh, deploy a proxy SQL server between the ingress and the MySQL, uh, we could have uh, we could have achieved what we wanted. Like we could have deployed the proxy SQL using Let's Encrypt. And the client client would connect to the proxy SQL with let's encrypt certificate, and the proxy SQL would terminate the SSL, and then it the proxy SQL would connect to the MySQL with another SSL like uh, self signed certificates. So uh, this solved our problem for a temporary basis, but there were some problems with it, like. If I have two MySQL instances, I would need two proxy SQL, each proxy SQL in front of one of the MySQL servers. That would create a lot of overheads. And as for the PostgreSQL, I would have need the PG bouncers as well. And it was uh, one for one. Like I, if I had 50 MySQL, then I would need 50 proxy SQLs. And if I had 100 of PostgreSQL, then I would have need hundreds of PG bouncers. So this creates a lot of overheads and, uh, and it, it just rises the operational complexity. Uh, but with QTB Gateway, finally we could achieve something uh, with which we could, have, uh, we could have solved the problem without any PG bouncer or without any proxy SQL. And the QDB gateway, uh, what QDB gateway did is it, it, it is supporting the SSL termination in the gateway. So uh, we can configure the gateway with let's encrypt and the connect can easily connect, uh, the client would easily connect with the gateway or the cluster in a TLS secure mode with let's encrypt certificates and it could establish a secure connection with the PostgreSQL as well. So that was the overall problem statement and what we actually achieved with KubeDB Gateway. Uh, now, to come up with this KubeDB Gateway solution, what we have actually adapted is the Kubernetes Gateway API. So if you know, uh, Kubernetes Gateway API is an open source project managed by the Six Network community. And uh, it's a collection of resources that model service networking in Kubernetes. So with Gateway API, we can manage our ingress egress traffic in a more extensible and role oriented manner. There are some implementations of this API and one of them is the Envoy Gateway project. So, in the Envoy Gateway project talk, you will find the implementation details and the uh, overall architecture details explained quite well. Uh, they have integrated the Envoy proxy as the actual gateway server in the project. And the integration actually took a few intermediate layers, as you can see, uh, to adapt the gateway API into the Envoy proxy. So there are some, they have defined some of the layers like provider, the intermediate uh, translation layer and the actual proxy layer and, and some infra layer. Uh, those are, uh, you can find these implementation details in their doc. Uh, the doc is well documented. So yeah. Uh, now, uh, to better understand why we have chose the Envoy Gateway um, to extend as with QDB Gateway, we have to we have to deep a little bit uh, dive a little bit deeper into the Envoy proxy thing. So we would uh, see how this Envoy proxy actually worked. Um, so in this slide, you can see 
simple Envoy gateway configuration or Envoy architecture that I made myself. Uh, this is a pretty basic one. So I just uh, excluded all the complex things here. So just understand two things, two separate things. One is the listener and another one is the cluster. So in the listener configuration, uh, I would uh, configure the socket address and some filter configuration. And inside the filter configuration, I would uh, configure some transport sockets. Uh, what is the filter configuration? I would ca come, up, come up with it uh, in a minute. And as for the cluster, in the cluster configuration, I would set up the endpoints and probably the transport sockets. Uh, so the transport socket is usually used for TLS and some other uh, networking stuffs. Uh, but uh, this is the basic overview of the onware proxy thing. So I configure the listener, I configure the cluster, I somehow there are some fields using which I can say that which clusters should forward traffic uh, from which listeners. But the main interesting part in the Envoy proxy thing is the filter configuration of the filters. So Envoy proxy actually supports uh, many kind of filters. Uh, and the, the filters are actually pretty powerful things. And they come up with some of the functionalities like statistics and like RBAC and etc. Um, to better explain uh, how filter works, uh, let's take an example of Postgres proxy filter. So in the Postgres proxy filter, what happens is the Postgres proxy filter decodes the wire protocol between a Postgres client and a Postgres server. The decoded information is used to produce Postgres level statistics like sessions, statements, or transaction executed, among others. Um, the Postgres proxy filter passes SQL queries carried in query and uh, parse messages. So when SQL query has been parsed successfully, the metadata is created and which may be used by other filters like RBAC. Also, it supports uh, some TLS functions like downstream, upstream TLS, TLS termination, and so on. So uh, these are the functionalities like the Postgres filter is providing us and it is providing uh, based on the Postgres protocol. Like I am trying to establish a Postgres, uh, Postgres server client connection. And in between when I'm using these filters, I'm achieving all these functionalities with that filter. I can uh, come up with some statistics. I can see them, uh, how many connections have been processed and like uh, how many unsuccessful, how many errors and so on. I can generate metrics from it. I can use all of these to the, as the Postgres filter is uh, actually parsing the SQL, SQLs, so SQL queries. So it can be used uh, customizedly in uh, implementing something like RBAC. So yeah, so this is a pretty powerful thing that the, the filter, filter thing is a really powerful thing. And as for we are working on databases, Envoy proxy supports some, some database filters like MySQL filter, PostgreSQL filters, and um, Mongo filter, Kafka broker, and, and, and a lot of them. So in the Envoy Gateway project, what we missed was actually these filters. Uh, we uh, could, um, um, there was no way that we could have configured these filters in the Envoy Gateway project. Like I am trying to establish a proxy, uh, I'm trying to establish a connection between a client to a, a PostgreSQL database server. I want a PostgreSQL filter uh, in, say, in the gateway. Though I am running Envoy proxy, but Envoy gateway uh, doesn't uh, provide anything to, using which I can configure this. So in QTB gateway, we have integrated uh, these database specific filters and we have introduced some new routes. If we, if you go to the, uh, if you go to the, um, if you go to the uh, Kubernetes Gateway API, you can see there are some routes like HTTP routes. There are also some routes like TCP route and so on. If you're well familiar with the API, uh, 
uh, you would understand this. Uh, so go to the docs definitely. So in KubeDB Gateway, we have introduced some new database specific routes. So what actually those routes do is they add some database specific network filters in the listener end. Uh, and all these filters are basically available in the Envoy proxy project, but not in the Envoy Gateway project. So, but actual Envoy Gateway is using the Envoy proxy. So there is a way that we can use, but uh, the way is not configurable right now in the Envoy Gateway project. But in the KubeDB Gateway project, we are uh, we are offering these configurations. And uh, in the, so in the KubeDB Gateway, we have integrated the database specific network filters and we try to use most of the potentials uh, the filter offers and without obviously without violating anything from the gateway API. And to integrate this, we have come up with new routes and, and, and another thing is we have tried to secure our database connections with TLS. So this is actually filter specific um, the filter which supports it, we have come up, uh, we have uh, we have made a way to configure the TLS certificates and so on. And also, we have uh, one another thing, which is the TLS transmission in the gateway. And it is specifically for the databases, which is not actually available in the uh, on the gateway project. So we will see how uh, how the things works in the demonstration uh, within a minute. Okay, so that was about KubeDB Gateway, what we are offering. And here uh, are some sample YAMLs, which we will use to uh, configure our gateway, uh, KubeDB Gateway. So first of all, the Gateway class, we are using the Envoy Proxy Gateway class controller. Um, that I have told you earlier that we have extended the Envoy Gateway project. So the Gateway class controller is even the Envoy proxy. And it has a simple Gateway uh, YAML. So if you see the simple Gateway YAML, in this Gateway YAML, I, what I am, I want to do is just, I want to uh, open a connection or I want to listen on a port for Postgres specific uh, Postgres specific queries or Postgres specific connections. So uh, I have uh, the listener, uh, this is a listener array. So I have uh, entered only one, one listener there. And so for this listener, I have uh, allowed only Postgres routes. So I will listen to the port 5000, uh, 5005. Uh, there's a name and the protocol. It is uh, okay. And then the TLS section. I want this uh, gateway to terminate the TLS for me in the gateway uh, and not to forward that to the proxy school server, post -school server. And as for the certificate traps, I have uh, mentioned one certificate here that is already present in my uh, present in my cluster. So the name is lesser. And this is a secret reference actually. And and now comes the Postgres route. And in the Postgres route, you can see that um, if I go to the previous slide, this gateway name is DB Gateway. And I have configured this Postgres route to listen from the DB Gateway. Parent ref, here you can see I have configured, listen to the DB Gateway. And as for the listener, which section, uh, if I add some more, uh, like another name with, Previous listener two, previous listener three. So I want to listen from the previous listener, which is configured in with this. So in the section name, I have entered the previous uh, dash list, and now I am defining the rules. What should be the rules? The rules should be it should uh, forward the traffic to a backend reference uh, with name my previous. So this is actually a service name. And I am, uh, I have, so yeah, that's the service name and the port is 5432. So what it actually will do is this gateway will uh, set up a listener in the gateway 
in the gateway and or in the on ramp proxy to listen in this particular port with this with allowed routes like this. And what would this route do is uh, catch all the traffic from that listener and forward it to this Postgres. Okay, so that was it. That was a, a rough uh, overview of our uh, newly invented uh, route. Uh, this this Postgres route is definitely uh, introduced by QDB Gateway. You can see the API version gateway.vajarmesh.com So like Postgres route, we have MySQL route, MongoDB route, Redis route, and Kafka route. So, and as for the elastic search, we, um, the basic HTTP will work. So these are the uh, kindly supported databases. You can see uh, we are supporting all these databases uh, kindly with our QDB gateway. And now, Let's go to a demo, live demo. Yeah. So first of all, uh, you can uh, see my terminal here. Um, okay, so you can see that um, I am running the Envoy Gateway controller port here. And this is not the actual gateway, this is the gateway controller port. Uh, this is, uh, okay. And I have a Postgres, you can see that I'm watching it. I have Postgres uh, configured or provisioned with QDB. Here is the Postgres CML. You can see uh, this is provisioned with QDB. And yeah, I have the service is received. Okay, so. Okay, so we can see that we have two services available. One is uh, without the cluster IP. So it's the governing service. Um, so we can ignore it. We would forward traffic with this, uh, this service. Okay, and it opens the port 5432. Um, okay, uh, we are all set, I guess. So let's now create uh, the gateway first. So I have the gateway class controller here with me. So I deploy it first and then the DB gateway. I have already explained this YAML to you in the slides. So now let's just apply it. That's straight. Okay, so we can see that our gateway is uh, applied and we have a public IP with us. So if we just hit this IP, we can uh, we can connect to the gateway. Now it is listening fine. Okay, if we just describe our gateway, TV gateway, yeah. You can see that the listener is there, but no attached routes are there. So it is listening, but there is no way that it knows where to forward the traffic actually. So now let's apply our route. So apply the shift. Okay, so uh, route is created. You can see route is created. And if we see this, yeah, you can see that the listener has one attached route with it. Okay. So now uh, what we should do is uh, let's uh, view the secret, view the auth secret so that we can connect to the uh, Postgres. Yeah. So we, uh, the name is my Postgres. It could be off. So yeah, we have the we have the is on the root user and password. Now let's try to connect to this Postgres server from this uh, through this gateway API. Okay, so is given in HT user equals to Postgres or. Uh, Postgres. 
Store, store this one. Even then, this one. Post, post is one four three point four two point seven nine point one four three three. Yeah, and the code is uh, code should be the five thousand five, I guess. Yeah, five thousand five. Five thousand five. So let's try to connect them. Okay, so you can see that we have connected to our Postgres through this gateway, and the connection is actually TLS secure. Okay. Uh, so the connection is still secured, uh, but uh, yeah, we want to verify the server actually. So uh, okay, let's let's see what kind of uh, what are the certificates that it returns. With OpenSSL, you can check it. Okay, so these are the certificates that the server is returning. And in the common name, we can see that uh, it is onboard.qgb.cloud. Yeah. So, yeah, we need to configure this in our uh, DNS resolver. So, okay. Let's copy this. Then I am configuring this uh, without sharing my screen. So this has been configured. It might take a while to actually resolve this. So then we will try the SSL mode, like full, verify full or verify CA. And as this was configured with the uh, let's and give certificate, I have the root CA. Uh, I have the root CA in it. This is uh, this is available in the let's and give website. Okay, so. This might take a while. Let's change it. Verify full. The same rules are because we see the results here. So DNS has been resolved and it has been connected also with the SSL mode verify full. So yeah, as I have configured it in my uh, DNS resolver, it has it has successfully it has successfully done it. So uh, yeah, let's apply some basic queries. Okay, so we can see everything is looking fine. Okay, so probably now you are happy with everything working fine, but let, uh, there are something left that we can show you uh, that um, how the KubeDB has, uh, KubeDB Gateway has configured everything. So let's, let's in, inspect uh, into a bit deeper. Okay, so let's give CTL forward. Uh, Let's forward uh, like uh, 4,500. So I am basically forwarding this port, uh, this port's 19,000 port to my local host's 4,005 port. And let's see what are the, uh, what is waiting for us. So we can see that it is the Envoy admin panel. And the Envoy gateway actually configures it with the gateway project as well. So in the config dump, if we see, we can see that uh, the, the SSL certificate is read in the in, inline byte. So it can be configured using the STS uh, service discovery system as well. So we do that. 
and here you can see in the postgres in, in the filter chain in the filter chain we can see the postgres proxy filter here available and the terminate ssl2 and uh, the tcp okay so this was the missing part that i i was talking about in the proxy sql uh, in the envoy gateway project we have integrated this in the fdb gateway project and as for the stats if we look into this uh, let's get a proxy sorry post sql so you can see that there are some uh, stats that the filter actually um, filter actually exports in this section so yeah you can see that with um, Envoy Gateway project, uh, with the QDB Gateway project, we are utilizing the power of uh, database specific filters. Uh, so yeah, that was it. And uh, in the side note, we have introduced uh, MySQL proxy as well, MySQL route as well, MongoDB route and, and some others. But, okay, so that was it from the QDB gateway, uh, QDB gateway project, but uh, there are some limitations that we are facing currently. Some limitations are from the are from the gateway API side and some are the, from the envoy proxy side. So talking about the uh, gateway API limitations, first of all, it doesn't support upstream TLS right now. Like it, it we can configure using envoy, but uh, we cannot put it from the gateway API using the gateway API. Actual API convention doesn't support the upstream TLS currently, but the good news is they are working on it. And uh, it, it is public that they are working on it and it will uh, uh, it will come into action, hopefully, uh, hopefully immediately. And as for the Envoy proxy, uh, TLS support is uh, not actually well equipped for all the databases currently. But we are working on it to solve these problems as well. And we are pretty confident that we'll be able to overcome all, all of these shortcomings. And uh, finally, the double TLS mode issue. It's an issue that is like, uh, if we try to connect to the client to gateway in a TLS secure mode and the gateway to the data, actual database server in a TLS secure mode, we cannot do it simultaneously. Either we have to consider the downstream TLS or the upstream TLS. So, but um, things are on progress. Hopefully this would do solve and then we would come up with a complete package uh, with all the TLS secure things upstream, downstream, database, client, and everything. So yeah, that was it from me. Now, if you have any question, um, please feel free to ask. Okay, so... Hello. Yeah. Can see some yeah. Hello? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask questions. Um, yeah, so hi, uh, Tamam here. Uh, so I wanted to clarify one thing. I mean, it's, um, but uh, today uh, the Onhoi project itself, uh, it supports these various databases about the uh, TLS encryption aspect of the, uh, it is uh, not well supported for all database types. So that is something we Upscore have been working on uh, and potentially uh, add that support to this uh, because Envoy is an open source community project, so we are able to do it. So we're working on adding that. Uh, and then the other issue that we have experienced is that uh, when you, uh, the double TLS issue, meaning when the client, let's say your PSQL connects to Envoy, it can use TLS, but then Envoy connects to the database that uh, using TLS seems to not work. 
or you can do the other thing where Envoy connects to the database using TLS, but then uh, your client, let's say PSQL, your application when it connects to Envoy, it does it cannot use TLS. So somewhere there, there is a bug or something in the Envoy uh, code base at this, at this time where using TLS, uh, basically one TLS, let's say that let's include TLS to connect to Envoy, but then Envoy decrypts it and then essentially uses a different TLS to connect to the Postgres database instance that is not uh, possible today. So we are also working on to address that. So essentially so that you have a fully encrypted TLS uh, connection all the way up to the database and, 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 and support that for all these different database types that uh, we currently support with our KubeDB product. Uh, yeah, so that's something we have been currently actively working on, but without using TLS, uh, what uh, does this show does works for all the various database types that we support. So, so uh, and then this essentially enables uh, the common use case where like, you know, people are running uh, all the databases in one cluster, but then the app user applications are running on a different cluster. And now uh, you need to access those databases. So uh, using, using the gateway IP address, uh, which uh, you were able to do this uh, and that, that becomes possible now. So, so that was uh, my uh, clarification on this presentation. So if there's any other question, let us know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hey David, just go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, I guess uh, it doesn't matter really, but uh, uh, we're thinking about looking into Cilium as a CNI. Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, that, doesn't really matter for any any part of this, but they do have a uh, cross cluster uh, mesh uh, thing. Right. I guess might. Uh, I I mean, if it's in the same cluster, it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, we're just talking about the gateway in and out of cluster here. But have you tested anything with different CNIs? Does uh, is there any performance benefits to any or uh, I don't know. I'll just leave it open uh, there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. So th thank you for your question. So, uh, so the one thing is uh, with Cilium, yes, I know that Cilium has its own sort of uh, uh, sort of this kind of multi-cluster solution. But one of the interesting issue with that is that uh, to use those, uh, you need to be able to control what CIDR ranges are used across those clusters. At least that's what I understand. Uh, basically, if you have two cluster for the database cluster and the application cluster, they need to use different side, different CIDR ranges for pod IPs and for the uh, service IPs. So, which uh, is not possible a lot of times when these databases are managed by like a uh, managed cloud providers because you know by default they like let's say you go to GKE and create ten clusters, they will by default all use the same pod IPs. Uh, ranges, I, I said ranges, and, and if the clusters are already existing, it's very difficult to change the side ranges without causing like a major, you know, like a restart of the cluster and all of that. Uh, so that is uh, so that is one of the interesting issues why we see that the gateway is actually becomes important because then uh, you can have the same side range in your application cluster and in the database cluster as long as the gateway IP uh, that is not overlapping. Uh, it all works. So, like if you are on cloud, you can use something like a, you know like Linter Cloud Balancer to expose this uh, the gateway IP, so which will become you know privately visible across the other cluster. I'm sure you may have to open some VPC peering and other stuff, but but thinking about in terms of like a cloud, you will be able to access it. I, I believe the same thing can happen in a on-prem deployment. Uh, you know where just this one IP address needs to be accessed from the other application cluster. So that is a kind of one part uh, where I see that using a Cilium based solution uh, isn't enough. But the other interesting case is this uh, TLS related issue. So if I kind of get a little bit more into the TLS issue, what happens is that let's say you have a Postgres deployed, uh, a cluster of Postgres, such as three pods, and uh, they are all TLS uh, uh, secure, meaning the Postgres to Postgres pod communication is also encrypted with TLS. Uh, there, the TLS certificates, as Tazid mentioned, needs to have, uh, like in the certificate science and the common names, sort of the pod names as the stable names, right? Like the pod names that we get uh, from the uh, stateful sets. 
Now the problem is that uh, when you try to access that from a different cluster, that same uh, DNS doesn't resolve in the middle and which becomes an issue. Uh, frankly, this is the original reason why uh, we had to do this, where we, we needed this uh, different model where, okay, the, uh, the, the certificates that, that are issued inside the database cluster uh, cannot really be used from a different cluster because the DNS names doesn't resolve that those cluster anyway. Uh, so, so, so in this case, we, uh, so in this case, we are talking like using something like the let's encrypt to expose those, right? I mean, uh, we have customers who have are uh, using like a kind of a private version of this let's encrypt type of service to have like a cluster wide uh, TLA, sorry, uh, certificate issuance. Uh, so those sort of scenarios, it becomes possible to essentially keep the database communication encrypted using something like a SART manager, which uses uh, certificates that are only sort of usable inside the cluster. But then across cluster, you have uh, more, you know, kind of a uh, something like a publicly usable or cross cluster usable uh, certificates and, and necessary DNS names in the certificate to make that all work. Yeah. So I would say that those are the kind of scenarios. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, uh, you, you've really, oh, sorry, I heard myself. Uh, you've really thought about the, the issue and uh, I, I hadn't thought about the uh, cross, uh, like uh, cross cluster domain issue at all. So yeah, you 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 already have a plan I <laughs> thought about this, great, thank you. Yeah, thank you, yeah, yeah. So this is one of those cases where, uh, uh, yeah, like a, something like a pure port exposure or port network exposure through this kind of Selenium. But I think there is another project called Submariner that I will find it. That also does like a cross cluster port to port level communication. It, it's not enough to just do that. That's what we found. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other question? Okay, uh, so so if we have no more question, you know, thank you everyone for joining. Um, you you have our email address here, uh, hello at .com or support at .com. You can always reach out to us. Uh, we are also available on Twitter if you want to talk to us there uh, or DM us. And uh, yeah, uh, so thank you again for joining, and hopefully uh, another webinar next week. Uh, we'll see you there. Thank you. Bye.